The king's summer break may be over but it was anything but restful. And a full autumn program of engagements for the king and queen, including a state visit to Kenya next month, follows a summer spent bolstering the union. For while the couple's last few months in Scotland may have appeared idyllic, it was not quite the relaxing holiday people might have assumed it was. For summer in Scotland this year saw the king not so much taking a break as making his presence felt. A study of the court circular reveals that from July, when the monarch traditionally spends a week at Holyrood House in Edinburgh, to the first week of October, the king undertook almost 40 engagements north of the border. And at a time when the popularity of the monarchy is declining in Scotland and support for independence remains steady, some constitutional experts suggest the king was doing his bit to shore up the union. Instead of staying put at the bolt holes of Birkhall and Balmoral, the king was out and about visiting Scottish businesses and community projects. Some of his engagements were traditional and ones his mother, Elizabeth II, would undertake each summer in Scotland, including a July garden party at Holy Rood House, visiting the Bremer Games and hosting both the Prime Minister and the Scottish First Minister overnight at Balmoral. But there were plenty more too, including visiting a hospital, opening a bridge, holding receptions, meeting schoolchildren and soldiers as well as attending very Scottish enterprises such as distilleries, more Highland Games and weavers. Scotland mattered so much that the King and Queen went back there after their successful state visit to France in mid-September. According to Professor Robert Hazel, of the Constitution Unit, Charles, like the late Queen, is both passionate about the Union and is passionate about Scotland personally. He would be deeply disappointed if the Union came apart. That concern about being King of all the nations of the United Kingdom was apparent, said Hazel when the new king visited Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland within days of his mother's death, and this concern for Scotland was very evident again this summer. His time north of the border included a mini-coronation in St Giles's Cathedral, Edinburgh, where the honours of Scotland, the Scottish crown, scepter and sword, were presented. Scottish support for the monarchy is significantly lower than in the rest of the UK. According to the most recent YouGov poll it stands at just 46% compared with 58% in the rest of the UK. This could be put down to supporters of independence. But there are Scots who want both independence yet to retain the king as head of state. Just 40% of Scots want a republic. Scotland's First Minister Hamza Yousaf told the SNP conference last week that if his party wins a majority of Scottish seats at Westminster, it will demand a fresh independence referendum. The first line of its manifesto reads, Vote SNP for Scotland to become an independent country. Experience the express like never before advert free experience without interruptions. Rocket fast speedy loading pages. Exclusive unlimited access to all our content. Start 30-day free trial The sense that Great Britain may no longer be such a United Kingdom is at the heart of a new landmark series from the BBC. In the four-part union, leading historian David Olusoga opens each episode asking, are we, perhaps, slowly approaching the end of the union? Are our generations, right now, in the 21st century, destined to become the last of the Britons, or will the union survive? Douglas Ross, leader of the Scottish Conservatives, believes the Union can survive and confirms the importance of the King's role. He said he had also noticed that the King was particularly busy in Scotland this summer. We saw when the late Queen passed away that there were huge crowds in Edinburgh and the same happened when the King was presented with the honours this summer, he said. That was a particular Scottish event and was very important. The Scottish National Party has seen support wane in the wake of police investigations and the resignation of Nicola Sturgeon as First Minister. This was highlighted by Labour's recent success in winning the Rutherglen and Hamilton West by-election with a 24 percent swing from the SNP. 
Recently support for Scottish independence has been falling, after polls suggested it had been too close to call. Scottish politics professor John Curtis said, The Crown does not need a unionist motivation, but nevertheless there is motivation for the Crown to shore up support for the union. Just how important the union is to the monarchy was highlighted when then Prime Minister David Cameron revealed that Elizabeth II had purred down the line when he ran to inform her that Scotland had voted against independence in the 2014 referendum. Cameron's revelation was seen as a gaffe because the monarch is supposed to be politically neutral. The King's busy Scottish summer, while being interpreted as useful to the Union cause, has been in no way overtly political. However, according to Professor Hazel, a future independent Scotland which retained Charles as king could prove hazardous. He would be king of Scotland just as he is king of his other realms. But this one is much closer at hand and in England we would pay more attention, he said. So there could be a situation where the Scottish and Westminster governments could be at loggerheads, and he is head of state of both. Who would he listen to? On whose behalf would he speak? He could be caught in the middle. Quote.